exactly. <laughs> and then um, we've been doing fan clubs uh, forever, um, you know, but on the artist's website, kind of in the corner of the internet. And so it's hard for me as a fan, you know, I like all these different bands, but it's hard to find for this particular band that experience. And so it feels like a, you know, kind of a secluded thing. Um, and I think a, a way to think about it is with Airbnb, people were renting out their homes for a long time on their own site. Um, and and um, Airbnb kind of brought it together to say, hey, here's a lot of places you can stay in San Francisco instead of having to like search on the internet places I can stay and I think that's what you know the, the things the solutions that we're building is it, it we're just kind of bringing that same thing that's been happening for hundreds of years in an organized way to the forefront and you know especially at the moment where musicians um, are really looking for for new revenue um, as things are changing quite a bit like there's 2.6 billion dollars that um, you know, can be made, and, and that's not just for big artists. Uh, I know, I'm sorry, that's one of your questions. So. <laughs> Maybe you should figure out a way next. I was just thinking about Airbnb, and that's a real, that's that's an interesting, uh, good analogy. But Thank you. Um, <laughs> the next thing is to put that up with fan experiences, so, so that then <laughs> so people will be paying the artists to come stay in their house. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then like to a leave. Whole, a whole new way to do a tour. <laughs> yeah, right. So the the fan the fan pays to put you yeah. up all all on your tour. <laughs> but to give you an example, I mean, a lot of, you know, there's, there's a saying in the music industry, which is that, you know, never meet the artist, because sometimes that can really change the dynamic, which is the reason I brought that up. You know, uh, certain times you'll meet your absolute hero in a restaurant or something, and they yeah. will just be an absolute. Yeah, we did this. I mean, you know, I toured with Amanda Palmer for um, a while there, and uh, we always stayed in fans' houses, um, and she had, you know, an administrative person who arranged all these things. They were really hard to arrange, and sometimes it was, you know, a little awkward <laughs> to come out of the shower and they're all like looking at you. But <laughs> so, but that that's sort of an extreme yeah. level of fan, of fan engagement there. So, um, we we touched upon briefly about, you know, do fans know what they want, or do you look to guide them? Um, when you are talking to uh, managers and artists and whatnot, are there certain do's and don'ts that you give them? Do you say, listen, be careful of this, watch out. I know from personal experience, we have to have a list of, you know, blacklisted people that can't come on. There's a whole kind of, when you're dealing with famous people, there's a lot of crazy people around them too. So do you guys have guidelines around that that you bring out or? Sure, I mean, just the same as like, uh, as you would be in public, the same online, like you're interacting with real people. so. Um, you know, whatever you're willing to do in public, also do here. Um, and then, of course, you know, there are regulations that you keep everybody uh, within. But really, for each artist, it's, it's uh, very different from one to the next, like what they want to do and, and how comfortable they are being, uh, you know, as, as open as they want to be or, you know, doing more traditional things like, you know, a, a specialized mer merge package with like a 10-minute Skype interview so it can be um, I, I think the thing the thing that we've seen is just it's there is there is not like a you know we can give people ideas uh, of what they can do but um, you know if you if you kind of set it up and limit it to that then musicians get turned off to well that's not really me so they feel put in a box instead of like no like you were saying earlier like th those are things that you give away for free what you know which other people might sell. So, what is it specifically for you that you feel comfortable with um, that gets your fans excited? Yeah, it's like it's that fine line between comfort and authenticity, which every artist strives to hit, and it's so fucking hard. <laughs> so, and then you attach a dollar value to it. Mm -hmm. So, I I think we we have guidelines and recommendations, but we get suggestions all the time. And I think one of the biggest joys about this space and even the sharing economy is just uh, letting people be creative about it and letting them, you know, use their own. But so, if someone wanted to do something that you guys were questionable on from the from the platform side of things, would you would you make a call to say no, you can't offer that? Yeah. Or would you let it ride? Well, we have terms of service that you know of things that you can do. You cannot sell illegal drugs. You cannot sell, you know, uh, intimate moments <laughs> you cannot, so, you know. the reason I asked is this because we actually had to seek legal counsel as to whether someone could offer a 10 million dollar threesome with Mick Jagger and the answer is no you can't it's online solicitation 
Um, but you can sell files of your own blood as long as it's not a certain amount. It's good to know where the line is. Yeah, yeah. that's good to know. <laughs> you just have to confirm whose blood it is and you can't transport in a certain country. So.